Hello, my dear friends. I welcome you all to my daily dose. So I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am a cardiologist and I am also the mentor for teaching general medicine in exams like NEET PG, AIMS, PGI, and as well as JIPMA. So as a part of today's daily dose, so here is a clinical question. I have a 69 year old woman complaints of intermittent palpitations lasting several hours, which then stopped spontaneously. She also suffers from asthma. Polter monitoring confirms paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the management of this patient? The options are digoxin effectively prevents the recurrence of arrhythmias. Anticoagulation is not necessary. Sotolol may be effective. Amidaron should be avoided. Flecainide orally may be an effective as needed treatment to abort an attack. Now, so in this clinical scenario, if you see, she is having paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. That means what paroxysmal means? Abrupt or sudden attack of atrial fibrillation intermittently. That is what is being diagnosed on the Holter monitoring. Now, how do you manage this particular patient? Now, first let me tell you the answer, then let me give you the explanation. The answer to this particular question is the flecainide orally may be given as needed treatment to abort the acute attacks, right? And the question asked is, what is the correct statement regarding this management of the patient? Now, so in patients with atrial fibrillation, there are two things that you need to take into consideration. Number one, one is your rate control and the other one is the rhythm control. Okay, so you take your rate control. What are all the various drugs with which we do the rate control is? We give beta blockers. We give calcium channel blockers, right? We also use the digoxin. Okay, then for controlling the rhythm, because in patients with atrial fibrillation, it's an irregularly irregular rhythm. Now for controlling the rhythm, we give flecainide, right and we also can give the amiodarone so these are the drugs which can be given for controlling the rhythm but first of all you take the beta blockers because one of the option is the beta blockers that is sotolol sotolol it is contraindicated in this particular patient why because she is having the history of asthma like what do we understand or what do we know beta blockers are contraindicated in patients with the bronchial asthma because they can precipitate the bronchoconstriction. So that is the reason why your sotolol is contraindicated. Now, amidorone should be avoided is one of your options. Let me tell you, you can give amidorone for controlling the rhythm of these particular patients with the atrial fibrillation. But with amidorone, what are the things like we need to take care? This amidorone is associated with certain adverse effects right like you take the pulmonary fibrosis is one of the very important adverse effect the liver damage is another important adverse effect peripheral neuropathy and as well as abnormal thyroid functions and if you take this abnormal thyroid functions it could be hypothyroidism or it could be hyperthyroidism any of this can develop with this amidarone and amidarone is your class 3 anti arrhythmic drugs which is nothing but your potassium channel blocker so that point you need to remember. Now, the point is that you take the other drugs like flecainide. Like flecainide is like what is the answer to this particular question. So flecainide is the drug which is recommended to avoid the continuous therapy. So this can ab abort the acute attacks. So flecainide can be used in this particular clinical scenario. And the other drugs that can be given is the propofenone is used in a similar way. What about digoxin? Digoxin, it is not effective in this particular situation because digoxin, it is useful for the rate control in long term, not for the acute management because the patient is having paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. That means sudden or abrupt onset of the atrial fibrillation. So for sudden or acute attacks, we don't use the digoxin. For long term maintenance therapy or for reducing the ventricular rate, we use this particular digoxin. So your digoxin is also not the answer in this question. Now, coming to your, the anticoagulation. Anticoagulation is not necessary, right? So now, let me just judge, like how will you decide whether the anticoagulation is required or not required? See, what is the important uh, risk in these patients with the atrial fibrillation is that these individuals, they may have stroke. 
cerebrovascular accidents. Why? Because in atrial fibrillation, atria will be beating nearly around 300 to 400 times per minute. So, and that is a feeble contraction. So, there is a high chance of thrombus formation within the atria. So, because of this thrombus, that may shower an emboli into the cerebral vasculature, resulting in cerebrovascular accident. Now, so this particular patients have the risk of developing the cerebrovascular accident. So, that is the reason why we need to consider to give anticoagulation or antiplatelets or we don't require any therapy at all. And how is that decided? That is being decided based on the scoring system called CHAR2DS2 VAS scoring. Now, what does this tell you? So, for each parameter, we give a score of 1 or we give a score of 2. So, C stands for congestive heart failure if the individual is having, give a score of 1 point, right, where the ejection fraction is less than 40%. If the individual is having hypertension, give a score of 1 point. And age of the individual is more than or equal to 75 years, give a score of 2 points. Then, if the individual is diabetic, 1 point. If the individual is having a previous history of stroke, give 2 points. If there is any vascular disease past, you give a score of 1 point. Age more than or equal to 65 years, give a score of 1 point and if the gender is a female give a score of 1 point. Now if you calculate the total score the maximum score that can be attained is 9. Actually if you calculate here it becomes 10 points but you need to take the point that age is age has come twice. Right if the age is more than or equal to 75 then the score becomes total of 9 points right so you should understand that. Now if the score is 0 the point is no therapy is given or aspirin can be considered. But if the score is 1, you should consider giving aspirin or anticoagulation. And if the score is more than or equal to 2, definitely you need to give oral anticoagulation to prevent the stroke. Now, if you take our patient, right, our patient is having a score of almost 2. See, she is a woman, right, give a score of 1. And she is 69 years, give a score of 1. So, the score, it is nearly around 2. So, when the score is 2, like what we have discussed, anticoagulation is required. So, anticoagulation is not necessary, is an incorrect statement in this particular clinical question. So, what would be the best answer here? Flecainide orally may be an effective as needed treatment to abort an acute attack. So, this question is related to management on the atrial fibrillation. So I hope you might have liked this particular short video. So please follow us on the daily dose for the daily updates. Thank you very much.